Hi everyone, and welcome back to Questions on the Parsha. This week's Parsha is Parsha Yitro, the Parsha of the giving of the Torah. And I've got some good questions for you. The first one is this. In the 18th chapter on the 13th line, we enter into the story of receiving the Torah with this line. The Yehi Mimacharat, the Yeshev Moshe, Lishbot et Ha'am. My question is, Mimacharat, the day after what? You know, when you look at the chronology, from this moment all the way through the building of the Mishkan, you'll see that it's terribly confused. So much so that in the 31st chapter, in the 18th line, Rashi gives his famous statement, Ein mukdam muhar b'Torah. There is no before and after in the Torah. That chronology, as it flows in the narrative, is not necessarily an absolute reflection of how things happen. So really, these are two questions. One is, what does this principle mean that the narrative of the Torah will play with the actual chronology? And number two, what role does the confused chronology play in the revelation at Sinai? Okay, number two, and once again, this is a word question. The introduction to the receiving of the Torah includes one of the more famous statements that we have from the book of Shemot. You will be to me a segula from amongst all the people because all of the land is mine. So first of all, what does the word segula mean? If you want to take a look at some cross-references, check out the third chapter of Malachi in the 17th line and the 29th chapter of Dibre Hayamim, the first book, in the third line. So then you'll define it. But on a deeper level, how do you reconcile the exclusive and universal halves of this statement, Li segula, you will be my Segula, I'm not going to define it for you. And li kola aretz, all the land is mine. And what does this tension serve as an introduction to the giving of the Torah? Okay, last question. You know, in the midst of the revelation at Sinai, we receive the Ten Commandments. And as you probably know, there's one set of the Ten Commandments that happens here in our narrative in Shemot, and another set in the book of Devarim when Moshe is retelling the story. And there are many differences, and I highly recommend that you take your word processor put them together in column format and look at them next to each other, identify the differences, and take some time to think about why the experience is different than the retelling. But to pick one point, if you look in Shmot, in our telling, you'll see that the reason given for Shabbat is Ma'ase Breshit, creation, Shabbat is to remember creation. And yet if you look in Devarim, in the fifth chapter, in the 15th line, you'll see the reason given for Shabbat is the Yitziat Mitzrayim, the going out of Egypt. So why would it be in Shemot that Shabbat represents creation and in Devarim it represents the going out from Mitzrayim? Those are our questions for this week. This time next week, Shabbat Shalom.